What's up, James? How much? How's it going? Going well, going well. Good. jenko has been going okay. Yeah? Yeah. I actually have a little Nutribullet thing that I'll mm. blend everything up. So sometimes I like it chunky. Sometimes I just want like a porridge style thing. So I drain a little water and just, you know, you can change the viscosity however you want. Just I, it's, it's very versatile. That's awesome. I didn't even uh, think about that. See, that's the beauty and the versatility of a Chonko diet. You can do whatever you want, man. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot once we actually get this started. So, um, okay. We're live in the Facebook group. Looks good. Okay. All right, cool. What's up, Chase? Hey, how's it going? Got Robert coming in. Got Brett. Brett's on the call today. Right on. All right, we'll give everybody just a few more minutes to hop in and then we will get this party started. All right, it is six o'clock. Let's go ahead and do this thing. All right, <clears throat> what's up everybody? Coach Baby Bear here. Look like you lift blueprint. Um, this is our weekly group coaching call. Um, this is going to be recorded. And uh, today's going to be kind of cool because we've invited some of my followers on social media to join our call today. So uh, we welcome all of the guests onto our call. Um, we got more and more people logging in today. Beautiful, beautiful. They're all hopping in. Love it. I love seeing my grid filling up with more and more people. It's awesome. All right. So we're going to start off this coaching call the way that we start off all coaching calls. We're going to do our quick wins. Um, so everybody who is watching uh, that is from my Instagram following or my Facebook following who's chimed in here, don't worry about this. This is just for um, the members of the Look Like You Lift Blueprint. So um, if you have a quick win, go ahead and you want to go first, go ahead and comment me in the chat section. Um, and then you can unmute yourself and share your win for the day. While everybody is putting in their me's in the chat, I'm going to put James on the spot. So James is on our Chonko diet, which is essentially um, pretty much my, I, I think my solution to dieting without tracking calories and without having to worry about what you're putting in your mouth. And we are all eating out of our thermoses. So here's what I've got in here today. By the way, if you're trying to do the Chonko diet without the actual thermos brand good freaking luck man <laughs> anyway let's see if i can show you that without spilling anything oh uh, i'm nervous i'm gonna spill something <laughs> but you get the idea anyway so i'm gonna eat that after the coaching call today i'm super excited um it's freaking delicious so james what have you done to make the choco diet your own well um one of the things that I've done is I, I, I've got this little Nutribullet that I used to mix shakes in and things like that. And I like the consistency of more of a porridge style soup. And so I've just used that to blend up all my ingredients together um, throughout the day. So I've got, you know, four different meals that I've been eating and one of them I'll keep it chunky. And next one I'll blend it up so that I have that uh, consistency of more of a porridge, a little bit thicker, um, another one I'll leave more watery just because I want more water with it and, and it's just I found that it's so versatile and easy to do throughout the day and so I'll set out my three thermoses I wake up at four o'clock in the morning I've already got everything in my instapot 
I've got it there. I just click my button, turn it on, go do my workout, come back. It's ready. Pull my thermoses out. And I say, okay, I want this one a little thicker. So I put more sweet potato in it. This one, I want a little bit uh, more mushrooms and some water and it's all right there in the pot. So I can pick and choose just with what I scoop out of my pot, what I want for each meal, but I'm getting everything from the pot, but I get to choose what I get throughout the day. It's beautiful. See, that is the versatility of the Chonko diet. He, he's still hitting his calories for the day. He's still hitting his macronutrients for the day, but he's just, he's made it his own. I love that. Thank you, James. Um, all right. So it looks like nobody commented me in the chat. So I'm going to have to call you out. Um, let's have Chris White go unmute yourself. This is your first coaching call. So we're going to share a quick win that happened between now and uh, the last coaching call. Quick win. Go. All right. Awesome. Well, nice to meet everyone. Uh, quick win is, uh, my deadlift form used to suck because I never knew how to do it. And I was kind of pulling the bar way too far away from my body. So quick win of the week here is my deadlift form has been on point and I've already jumped up like 50 pounds since, uh, over the past like few workouts here. So hell yeah. Love it, man. Okay. Let's, uh, Selena, why don't you go? Um, I didn't quit this week. We had a really yes. good week last week and I was like, this sucks. And I didn't quit and I'm back on track with eating and I'm going to do my next workout after the call. Love it. <laughs> persistency, consistency and persistency. That's what I love to hear. Awesome. Selena. Uh, okay. Robert, let's have you go, man. All right. So, so, oh, I forgot. There's two Roberts. Okay, let's have Robert. Robert Lee go. Robert Lee. Oh, all right, me. All right. Um. So even though it, uh, yesterday was my girlfriend's, well, Sunday was my Sunday was my girlfriend's birthday. So we've been eating like crazy the last couple of days, but I've only managed to get, gain three pounds, which thank the Lord, I lost. So far, I've lost like 18 pounds, and so to only have gained three after all the eating we've done is a blessing. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. All right. Let's have Robert Dubay go. All right. Uh, first, let's make this easier. My friends call me RJ, Robert John. So we'll make it easier. And Robert can go by Robert and you can call me <laughs> RJ. Um, my, my quick win, um, we're remodeling our basement and they weren't supposed to start till next week. Uh, they called me on Thursday last week to say that they're coming Monday. Um, I have about nine years worth of collection we'll call it collection some junk uh, down in the basement um so i spent all day friday all day sunday uh moving it from the basement to the garage and i still managed to get my workouts in love it die, but i got it done still got it in love it yep um let's have chase go chase is one of our newest members he joined just last week so chase let's have you go man hey um so since I joined, haven't gone out to eat once. So for me, that's a pretty big deal. So enjoying it. Feel good. Love it. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Um, I got Louise on. So big shout out to Louise's wife, Chase. She just joined the Look Like You Lift Blueprint today. So this is today her first coaching call today. So just want to welcome her, give her a big warm welcome. Um, Let's have, let's have you guys unmute yourselves and let's have both of you share your wins for the day for the week. Um, so I'm a little bit on pause, right? Cause I uh, had to quarantine our roommate ended up tested positive, but since then I've done pretty good with staying within my, within my macros and have continued to lose weight, even though I'm not actively exercising at all. I'm doing like 20 minute walk, 10 minute walk every other day. So even with that, just watching what you eat, still lost some weight. So that's my win. Love it. Let's hear your win. Uh, I guess my win for this week is taking the plunge and signing up for the program. So I'm excited to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to have you. All right, let's have um, Kirsten. Why don't you go? Or not? Okay, let's have Red. Why don't you go? All right, small win for today and then a bigger one. Okay. I, I had candy in the office and I didn't eat it. And it was fucking licorice. 
and that's like my <laughs> trip in it. <laughs> uh, that's uh, good. Big win. My my big win today is uh, Saturday. I weighed in at two oh seven, so I've lost like twenty five pounds since I've been on this program. Well done, well done. All right, let's have my own intern, Brett. Why don't you hop on and share your quick win, man? I knew it was coming. I knew you was coming. Yeah. Um, so my win for this week was over the weekend on Saturday. I actually went to a strongman gym um, as per recommendations by Coach Baby Bear, and I participated in a training session um, that went through different. Uh, strongman lifts and something I thought was pretty cool was um, I got under a yoke um, and it was a 50 foot yoke walk and they loaded up the plates I've never done this before so I didn't know what I was doing but we did like 535 pounds and I was moving all over the place but I got it down and uh, just getting ready for a little competition that I'm going to be doing in September so I figured that was a pretty good win for me. Yeah, did it feel like the, wa the yoke was just going to crush your spine? Oh my gosh, my back was talking to me that day. It was wondering what on earth are you doing? Yeah, if you want a great if you want a great way of shrinking two inches, just get underneath <laughs> a yoke for a few minutes. That'll do it. All right. Um let's go ahead and um uh, if you have a win that you want to share, go ahead and just comment me in the chat section. I'll give you 30 seconds. Comment me in the chat section, and then you can unmute yourself. We'll uh and we'll get your win. And then we'll get into uh, the presentation. James, go ahead and unmute yourself, man. Go ahead. Hey, so in conjunction with the Chonko, um, I also ran out of plates today, so I get to buy new bumpers. That is always an exciting feeling. The two exciting feelings are buying new pants and buying more plates. Those are always those are always awesome. And uh, Kirst, what's that? And lifters. And lifters, there you go. You can never have too many lifters, let's be honest. Uh, Kirsten, why don't you go? Unmute yourself. Okay. Um, my win is I'm down 10 pounds now, and I feel like um, my relationship with food has been better because this is kind of a dorky one, but I've kept a bag of chocolate chips in my cupboard for like, I don't know, three weeks now and haven't eaten it, and so that's a win. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how you have that. I don't know how you have that self control. But that's that's, that's what this has done is it's helped it so I can I can do stuff like that and only take like a little bit. Anyways, it's cool. I love it. That's awesome, Kirsten. Congratulations. Um, okay, Jonathan, unmute yourself, man. Let's go. Hey everyone, uh, two wins for me. Uh, so uh, weights are starting to feel a lot lighter. Um, form is starting to get a lot more better. Um, and down about two pounds from last week's uh, weekly average, and it's only my second week. So things are going good so far. I love it. Yeah, Jonathan uh, joined just a couple weeks ago. So that's a good average, two pounds a week. Can't be uh, nothing wrong with that. So, Revan, unmute yourself, big guy. Let's hear it. Uh, my win for this week is I need to buy, like, five new shirts because I have a favorite T-shirt brand. It's Nine Line. And none of them fit me anymore. <laughs> they, they don't fit you in a good way, right? <laughs> they don't, yeah, they don't fit me in a good way. As in, as I'm like walking around, I'm always like rolling my shoulders like, man, these are just so tight. And so, yeah, I got to go buy new shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Love it. All right. Let's go ahead. I'm going to record this and let's get this party started. So, Today, we're going to be going through the 10 biggest lessons that I learned from dropping 63 pounds. Um, and um, I've invited a handful of people from Instagram to watch this as well. Um, so you are welcome to take notes. Uh, for all of my members, these slides will be available in the membership site. Um, and then after our presentation, we'll go ahead and go into questions um, from the members form check. Uh, we won't do form checks. I'm sorry. We'll do it. We're doing our form checks on Thursdays. Now um, we'll have a dedicated time to do all of our form checks all in one sitting. We'll go over questions on the diet. We'll go over questions on your programming, motivation, mindset, whatever you guys need, but let's dive right into it. So this is a quick little presentation of the 10 lessons uh, from losing 60 pounds. So 
this is appropriate. I really wanted to share this with you guys because I just um, had a photo shoot on Saturday. And this is my first photo shoot in the past like six years. And I really wanted to, through my weight loss journey, I really wanted to book a photo shoot mainly because I needed updated headshots because I'm going to be, I'm, I'm coming out with, a, with new books. And so I need to have a professional looking photo of me on those books. But I also wanted to give myself uh, a, a challenge to look my best uh, for something. So put down the money to hire a photographer and uh, that gave me the extra motivation I needed to actually finish out my cut. So the cut is done. Um, we are now kind of in a maintenance phase. I'm hop hopping back on the Chonko diet. Couldn't be more happy about that. Um, and so I'd like to share my 10 lessons with you of what I learned along the way. So here is where I started. And this picture was taken about a year and a half ago. I started my weight loss journey at 235 pounds. Now, a lot of you guys understand that my background is in strength and conditioning. I, I I have spent my career getting you as strong as humanly possible, okay? Uh, my background was in competitive strongman, placed in Utah Strongest Man back in 2017. I uh, went into competitive powerlifting, competitive weightlifting, so I've done it all, right? I got to a point, however, where, and well, take a step back. If you're ever in competitive strongman, you'll always hear people say, you got to eat big to get big. You got to eat a lot of food to get stronger. And you'll look at the competitive strongman, the competitive powerlifters, and they're huge. They're 300 pounds. Sometimes, sometimes they're even 400 pounds. They can barely tie their shoes, but they can sure lift a lot of weight, right? So that was the mentality that I was, was in as well. As if I want to continue to get stronger, if I want to compete at a national level, I got to get bigger. I got to eat to get big. And so I was shoveling the food into my mouth day by day by day. So eventually I ballooned up to 235 pounds. And by this time, my business was taking off. At the time, I was launching a gym. Um, I launched a barbell club. And so all of this was taking up a lot of my time. And I was no longer able to dedicate as much time into my training or my nutrition. And so uh, I also got married. And uh, if any of you guys know, getting married, uh, you, lo you, you lose a lot of your gains and you get fat. It's just, it, if you get married, it's just, that's just what happens. Okay? It happens to the best of us. Let's not be ashamed about that. Um, so that's what happened to me. So eventually found myself weighing 235 pounds. My strength plateaued regardless of the programming changes. I hired a coach to, uh, and I'm a firm believer that coaches need coaches. So I had a coach helping, with me, helping me with my programming. But what I found was I just couldn't break any of my plateaus. I was stuck for a long, long, long time. My sleep quality was going down, and a lot of that could be uh, because of my throat was getting enlarged, so sleep apnea was becoming a problem. Um, I noticed that I was becoming insulin resistant, so I could have a very sugary meal or have a high-carb meal, and I wasn't getting any energy from that. In fact, the opposite happened. My energy went down, and I was just feeling worse. And throughout the entire day, I just had lethargy. I was just lethargic all day long. I was taking energy drinks, I was having caffeine all day, um, and nothing could just beat this brain fog that I was having and always wanting to take a nap. So at the end of the day, guys, I was the trainer who looked like he needed a trainer. I became my worst nightmare. <laughs> so a year and a half ago, I started my journey into new territory, which was to lose weight. Uh, but the, the challenge with losing weight, and every strength athlete knows this, is if you lose weight, you lose your strength. If you lose your weight, you lose your performance. And as a strength athlete at heart, that was my biggest fear was I can't lose the weight and lose my strength. I, just, I spent years and years and years accumulating this strength. I mean, this is how I've made it so far in my career. And so I, I struggled to find a way to lose the strength or to lose the fat without losing the strength. So fast forward a year, I lost about 10 pounds in a year. I saw slight strength increases, but really at the end of the day, not much changed, okay? I still had lethargy, I still was feeling lazy, I still felt like crap, I still had insulin resistance issues. Um, I lost a, a little bit of weight and I could just chalk that up to just going on, just doing 10 minutes of, of cardio per day. 
but not much changed. 10 pounds in a year, that, that's not very impressive, okay? And then, so this was back earlier this year, and then six months later, this was me, 165 pounds. So 60 pounds in six months. So I was averaging, so before I was averaging one, or I was averaging 10 pounds a year, and then in the past six months, I was averaging 10 pounds a month. I didn't lose any strength. I even set new PRs on some of my lifts. I'm now way more insulin sensitive, so I can use carbohydrates to my advantage. And I'm more energized. I've slept, I'm sleeping better than ever before. And this is the first time in six years that I'm under 10% body fat. Okay. So this is what we're going to be covering today. How, what, so what exactly did I do between this time and this time and what didn't work between this time and this time that's what i'm going to be teaching you guys today and what you'll find is a lot of the lessons that i'll be teaching you are already implemented into your program so that's a very very good sign you probably wouldn't have these things if i didn't go through my own transformation so here's also my graph that you so you can see this this is the uh the my weight chart so as you can see i started up here i didn't start actually tracking on my graph until i got down to like 215 um, but this gets the point across as you see over here in the later month or in the later weeks, the weight just completely plummeted. That's not fat. Okay. That's mainly water weight. So in order to prepare for my photo shoot, um, this is a bodybuilding tactic to look as good and to look as lean as and dry as you possibly can. You drop water. So you can, th this huge drop right here at the very end, that's, that's water weight. It's not fat. That'd be really cool if it was, but it, it, it's not. So that's my weight chart. So lesson number one, book smarts versus life smarts. So my knowledge of exercise and nutritional science didn't really help me when it came to uh, resisting cravings and snacks on the shelves. I know how fat loss works. I know how fat oxidation happens. I know how insulin unlocks the muscle cell to allow amino acids, sodium, and potassium to, to grow. Okay, I know all of that stuff. But even though I had the science, I knew the book smarts, I still, that didn't help me at all when it came to the snacks and the cravings and the fast food. There's endless studies and meta-analyses that show you how to burn fat. I mean, if you think of like any kind of diet out there, there's a study that proves that it works, right? But at the end of the day, what you need is something applicable, simple, and effective. And that's where the blueprint diet, the golden hybrid diet, and the new Choco diet come in, okay? The science is there. I've done all the work on the science, but now it's my job for you to put the science into a way that is applicable, simple, and effective. So that's why we, we have the diets that we have, and that's why these diets are way simple, way more simpler than you may think. Um, you may get it and be like, wow, it's that simple. It can't be that easy. Yes, it can. That, that I've spent a lot of time and a lot of effort to make it that simple. So if you, if it is simple and easy for you to follow, you're more than likely to adhere to it and actually follow through with it. Right? So the three diets that we give you guys, the blueprint diet, the golden hybrid diet, and the Choco diet, I used a combination of all three of these to lose the weight over the last six months. I started the my journey in the in the over the last six months with the blueprint diet which a lot of you guys who are beginners is, is fairly simple we give you some meals and we just have you focus on two things proteins and calories the next diet is the golden hybrid diet where we actually focus on carbohydrate timing consuming the majority of your carbohydrates around your training window and then lastly the chonko diet which is my baby which is my uh pride and joy because i think the majority of you guys have really really enjoyed it um, just because of how easy it is for you to follow, um, which is kind of a combination of both of the, the blueprint and the golden hybrid into one, but in a way that you, that, it, that you can do it yourself. You can have as many meals as you want. You, it's literally impossible for you to overeat. You just eat out of the pot and you make it your own. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two, this isn't accidental. Okay. Rapid weight loss doesn't happen accidentally. It requires dedicated, focused effort, discomfort, and energy. So for the first year, so the first year of my weight loss journey, I didn't track my weight. I didn't even track my workouts or my food. 
I just trained and ate intuitively. Okay. So if you guys ever heard of intuitive eating, just eating when you're hungry, just sticking to certain food groups, uh, just training the body parts that you feel like you should be training. Okay. That that's bull crap guys. Um, you don't just accidentally lose the weight. You don't just accidentally not be fat. You don't just wake up one morning with, with a six pack abs. Okay. In order to make a change in your body, it requires focused effort and it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have moments of discomfort and that's the point. That's how you know that it's working and it requires energy. It requires that you have to put in energy to lose the weight. Okay. The last six months of my, of my weight loss journey, that's when I dedicated all of my energy and focus into my weight loss. Okay. That's when I took it way more seriously. That's when I finally said enough is enough. We're going all in on this. Okay. We're going balls to the wall, full throttle. We got to get this done. Okay. That's number two. Number three, goal hopping is a great way to stay stuck. So here's what I mean by that. For the first part of my weight loss journey, I was jumping between losing weight, getting stronger, building muscle, and going back to losing weight, okay? I saw a little bit of weight loss, but then I also saw some strength loss, and so I freaked out and panicked, gained a bunch of weight to get my strength back, and then I tried to lose the weight again without losing the strength, so I was constantly going through this vicious cycle of lose the weight, lose the strength, gain the weight, gain the strength back. So I was in this cycle, I was hopping between goals of get stronger, get huge, lose the weight, lose the, lose a little bit of strength performance. Okay. And this is the main reason why I didn't make any progress. Cause I was, if you think about a car, what's going to get you to your destination faster, putting, going one mile in, in drive and then a mile in reverse and then a mile in drive and then a mile in reverse and then maybe a mile and a half in drive and then a mile and a half in reverse or just, getting to your destination, right? That's kind of what this, that's the same thing with goal hopping. Pick one goal, stick to it, and don't change your goal until you've accomplished it, okay? Pick one goal, put all of your energy into that one goal. The same thing can be said when you're trying to establish a new habit. Uh, we went over the habits for long-term success, and I specifically said in the presentation, pick one habit to work on, and dedicate all of your energy into getting that habit solidified before you work on another habit. The same thing goes for your goal. Pick one goal, focus on that goal, and you have a higher likelihood of accomplishing it, and then you're gonna have an even better time when you work on the other goal instead of jumping between the two. Number four, calories count. As much as you don't wanna hear it, calories count. I was against counting calories for the first year losing my weight. Uh, I understood the law of energy balance, you know, eat less, move more, but I never tracked. I never tracked how much energy I was expending. I never tracked how much energy I was consuming. I just understood the law of energy balance. Again, the book smarts, but I never applied it. I ate all the right foods. Okay. I didn't eat junk food all the time. We'll get to that in a later section, but uh, I had junk food sparingly, but I still wasn't making any progress. Okay. But it wasn't until I monitored my caloric output and input and adjusted it on a weekly basis was when I made progress. Okay. Now, when I say calories count, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to count calories, but they do matter. Okay. We can't deny the fact that energy in versus energy out matters for weight loss. Okay. So, Monitor your calorie output, monitor your input, adjust accordingly, you'll make progress. Number five, this is kind of a segue into number five, track daily. So what doesn't get measured doesn't get, doesn't improve. Okay. And a lot of you guys understand this about me. I'm a very analytical person. I love data. Okay. I, the more data we have, the more variables that we have to, to manipulate and to adjust so we can, so we can see an outcome, right? You'll notice that on my weight loss chart that I showed you, it started back in February. And it's not a coincidence that that was also when I started to see the pounds drop, okay? Was when I started tracking. I weighed myself every single morning and I tracked my food every single morning. But also, most importantly, I was tracking my performance in the gym. If you are trying to set a new PR 
or trying to maintain a current weight on a lift, this ensures that through your weight loss journey, you're not burning muscle mass and you're, and you're mainly burning off the body fat. If your performance is going down on a week by week basis, that means that something is wrong with you, either your nutrition, your programming or your rest. And we need to make an adjustment. You should be maintaining for all of you guys in the look like you lift blueprint. You should be maintaining weight or going up in weight every single time. If not, we got a problem. We got to adjust it. It's where you got to book a call with me, get on the phone so we can figure out what's going on. Okay. And any of my listeners who aren't on the look like you lift blueprint, get on it. So you can save yourself a lot of time and, and headaches and frustrations. Number six, calculators suck. So a calculator can be a great tool when you're getting started. And what we're talking about is uh, calorie calculators and macronutrient calculators. There's thousands of them online. Um, they're awesome tools to get you started, but they are not the tool to determine how you should be regularly eating. Okay. And I made this mistake for the, for the last year, again, with me being so analytical and so data driven, I put a lot of trust into these calorie calculators. I found the most accurate ones with the most evidence behind it of it working. Um, I, I found the one that had, that's been used for decades and decades that had the most, uh, the most science put into it, uh, that had the longest track record of working. Uh, and I didn't lose any weight, but the data was there. The numbers were there. So why isn't it working? So here's the problem. Back in February, I didn't know this. I didn't have a whoop until just about a month, uh, almost two months ago. But back in February, I decided to not listen to the calculators and just adjust my calories on a weekly basis until I started losing weight. And sure enough, if you look at the calories that I consumed back then were way off from what the calculator was telling me. And sure enough, when I got the whoop, which this whoop uh, will tell you how many calories that you're expending uh, throughout the day. It's not, the most spot on accurate tool, but it is the most accurate tool out of all the tools in the market right now. Right? So I, I put a lot of trust into the whoop. So sure enough, uh, when I got the whoop, my daily calories were about 1700, um, 1750. And my whoop was showing that my daily energy expenditure was about 2100. Sometimes it was 2200. So that's consistent with what I was eating. I was just from trial and error and adjusting calories on a week by week basis, I was in a 500 calorie deficit based off of expending 21 to 2200 calories a day. But the daily energy expenditure according to calculator.net, which has a pretty quote unquote accurate calculator, it was saying I should be expending 2600 calories a day. Okay. Uh, but in order, and, and so if I went off of that, if I just said, okay, I should be expending 2,600 calories and I did a 20% caloric deficit off of that, which is considered aggressive, I should be eating only 2,080 calories. Okay. Well, if we look at the more accurate number, my daily energy expenditure about 2,100 calories and I should be consuming 2,080 calories. No wonder I'm not losing any weight. I'm eating at a maintenance level. Okay. But the calculator's right. <laughs> okay. So we use calculators to kind of get a baseline, right? To figure out where we should start. Even with you guys, when you start in the program, we use a calculator to figure out where you should start. It is not the end all be all over the next six months. So many changes and adjustments happen to your meal plan that by the end of the six months, you are so off of what a calorie calculator tells you, it's not even funny. And that's the idea. You're a human being. You have different needs. You have a different metabolism than the one that's been used in, than the one that's shown in your calculator. As you can see from me, no wonder I wasn't losing weight for the past year. I was eating at maintenance calories. It wasn't until I kept dropping the calories that I started losing the weight. Okay. So calories suck. Use them as a tool to get you started, but don't use them as the end all be all tool. Number seven, the body isn't as feeble as you may think. So I used to believe that if you didn't consume a buttload of carbohydrates before your training, you wouldn't perform very well. And this was my belief, this was my belief back when I was a, a year and a half ago when I was still doing competitive strongman. Uh, I thought I had to freaking carb up. I thought I had to have 
200 grams of carbs to, to prepare for my trip for a heavy training session of strongman. Um, it was even to the point where if I had a really busy day, I even saw it as okay to consume some junk food for pre-workout, uh, instead of training hungry because I got to get my calories in. I got to have my carbohydrates or I'm going to have a terrible training session. I'm going to perform like crap. I'm barely going to be able to lift hundred pounds. That's wrong. That is a wrong way of thinking. Your body has energy stores designed for the off chance that you don't have a pre-workout meal. Two of them come to mind. Well, three of them come to mind. The, the two prominent ones are glycogen stored in the muscle bellies. And the second one is fat. Okay. You have energy. You have energy ready for your training session. So you don't need to be carving up for your training sessions. You don't need to be consuming this huge pre-workout meal to get a good training session. You should have a pre-workout meal, but it doesn't need to be this grandiose freaking black bear diner breakfast for your training session. You don't need that. Okay. Unless you're hypoglycemic, you don't need a huge meal to train. Okay. And if you are hypoglycemic, then I would recommend bringing a little baggie of fruit snacks or a little baggie of Sour Patch Kids that you can take one little morsel every five minutes to keep your blood sugar levels elevated. Now, last thing that I want to bring up, to bring up on this is you don't need to eat back the calories that you expended from your training session. Okay. When you're lifting heavy, you may think that you're expending all these calories. You're not, you're only burning about a hundred calories. Okay. And again, you can use the whoop to prove this. In your weightlifting session, we use weightlifting to build muscle and to get stronger, which in turn will increase your metabolism. But the weightlifting itself does not burn a crap ton of calories. Even when I was doing strongman for like two hours, I was probably only burning 250, maybe 300 calories. Okay? Weightlifting does not expend as many calories as you may think. So you don't need to eat back the calories that you expended. Okay? This also brings me brings up the next point about using weightlifting for weightlifting for weight loss. You shouldn't be using weightlifting for weight loss. That's where the cardio comes in for the extra calorie burn. Okay, um, but we'll get into that in another lesson. These are just the lessons that I learned. Is um, your body isn't as feeble as you may think. Your body isn't made of glass. We know this when it comes to injuries. Um, it also goes into training. You don't need to be consuming a huge meal to get a good training session in. Just try, just hear me out on this. When I was going through my weight loss journey, there were some training sessions where I didn't eat before and I trained just fine. So that really puts a huge dent on the importance of a pre-workout meal. Sometimes you're okay if you don't have one. Who knows? You might even perform better. We'll see. Experiment. Find out. Number eight, fast food just doesn't work. Sorry to burst your guys' bubbles, but fast food just doesn't work. From a calorie perspective, junk food can work, okay? If I've given you, if I prescribed to you 2,000 calories and you can make a McDonald's burger and fries work into your calories, technically, from a caloric standpoint, yes, it can work. From a psychological perspective, it is impossible. So the problem with junk food is and we're, we're talking like commercialized forms of food, the people who own these products invest millions of dollars in laboratories to get their food to be as delici delicious, satisfying, and addicting as possible. Okay, If the food company can make their food as craving as addicting as possible, they've essentially fabricated a recurring customer through the use of chemicals, and the right, um, just the right perfect ratio of ingredients. But regardless of how they do it, they're fabricating a recurring customer by making their food as craving and as addicting as possible. So the meal from Burger King may not be a problem right now. Again, from a calorie standpoint, it may work. But the feeling of dissatisfaction, continued hunger, and the insatiable craving is going to lead to an inevitable binge later that day or later that week, okay? And this is what happened to me in the first year of my weight loss. I thought that, yes, from a caloric perspective, I can make these two double cheeseburgers work. I had like two double cheeseburgers like every freaking day. It was terrible. I, I'm like disgusted with myself looking back, but this is helping me help you guys. <laughs> but anyway, I was having McDonald's all the freaking time. It worked in my calories, but what I didn't realize is I was establishing an addiction. 
And I was building up this craving that was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until I found myself mindlessly driving through the drive through and putting in a huge order of spicy chicken sandwiches and more cheeseburgers and a huge sugary soda and fries. It just, just mindlessly. Okay. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. So at the time it may seem fine. Okay. But what you are doing is you're building up a craving that's just going to become inevitable and insatiable and you're going to binge and it's going to destroy that hard earned caloric deficit that you had for the week. So just do yourself the favor, cut out the junk. I'm, I am more, I would rather have you go hungry than get junk food. That's how serious I'm taking this. Okay. And I'm all about food. I freaking love food, man. Um, but the junk food is such a serious problem that is going to make your weight loss journey so much more difficult. So that's why I say I'd rather have you go hungry than have junk food. Okay. Now with that said, I would much rather have you make your own quote unquote junk food rather than buying it. If you want a burger, go make a freaking burger. Okay. If you want cookies, go make your own cookies using your own ingredients. If you want to make a cake, if you want to make brownies, go make your own brownies. Okay. That way you know what ingredients you're using. You're using healthier ingredients that haven't been loaded with a bunch of chemicals that you don't know about. And in the long run, yeah, sure. Like they're, from a calorie standpoint, they're probably not going to be the best. Sure. But at least you have a healthier relationship with your food. You can enjoy your favorite foods, but without the addiction and without the insatiable craving and without the attachment to these giant commercialized food products. Okay. So junk food just doesn't work. Make your own junk food. Number nine. Um, this one's for Robert Lee. So you didn't gain three pounds of fat from that cheat meal. Okay. So it happens to everybody. You go out and you have a big meal yet you celebrate, you have a social gathering and the next day you get on the scale and you've gained five pounds. Right. And so you freak out. You have a panic attack because, oh my gosh, I had a freaking fun time. God forbid I had a great time and I gained five pounds. So what do you do? You starve yourself. You do three hours of cardio to make up for the calories that you consumed the day before in hopes that you'll lose the five pounds. Let me ease your mind with a little bit of mathematics. Okay. So one pound of fat is the energy equivalent of about 35 to 4,200 calories. Okay. So if I had one pound of fat here, that contains about 35 to 4,200 calories. So, which means if you wanted to gain one pound of fat, you would need to be in a caloric surplus of about 3,500 calories. Okay. So in a week time span, if you wanted to gain one pound of fat, you would have to be in a 500 calorie surplus each day to gain one pound of fat. So with that said, and with that understanding of just basic mathematics of how many calories is required to accumulate a pound of fat, it is highly unlikely that your one large cheat meal, even if it was a binge at a buffet, was 17,500 calories. I can safely guarantee that you did not consume 17,500 calories and not vomit that back up. Okay. At most, your big cheat meal was probably a thousand calories. Okay. Maybe 2000 calories if you're like me and you could probably be a competitive eater if you wanted to. But that thousand calories, if that was a thousand calorie surplus, you're realistically only looking at a third pound of fat accumulated on your, on your frame, a third pound of fat. Okay. So what's the, what's the other four and a half pounds? Where do the other four and a half pounds come from? It is more than likely that those four and a half pounds is just water weight and glycogen replenishment. Okay. Because your cheat meal was probably very high in carbohydrates and it was probably very salty. Okay. Those two things combined together are going to retain a lot of water. Okay. And you're probably going to replenish some of the glycogen that was lost through your dieting and through your hard training sessions. So each gram of glycogen bonds to three grams of water. Okay. So if you have one pound of glycogen replenished in your body, you've got three pounds of water bonded to that pound of glycogen. That's four pounds of non-fat mass. Okay. 
So that five pounds that you gained over the weekend, you can safely say that it's not fat, okay? It's water weight and it's bloat and it's gonna go away. So there's no reason for you to starve yourself and there's no reason for you to panic, okay? Just hop back on your meal plan. Use those extra carbohydrates to have a great training session the next day. It's that simple, okay? I'm gonna use myself as an example. So like I told you guys, I dieted for a photo shoot and I got down to 160 pounds, like 159.9 the day of the shoot, okay? And all of that was water. So on Saturday and Sunday, I just threw my hands in the air. I didn't care what I, what I was going to eat. I just decided to eat whatever the hell I wanted, right? I gained 17 pounds on Monday. 17 pounds, okay? And I'm not worried about it, okay? In two days, the bloat is going to go away. The water weight's going to go away. And I'm going to be right back down to 165, 167, okay? No reason to panic. No need to panic. Have fun. Have a social gathering, enjoy your food, enjoy your cheat meal. You're going to see some weight gain in the morning, but just remember these mathematics, okay? One pound of fat is the equivalent to 3,500 calories. So if you see five pounds gained in the morning, it's, it's highly unlikely that you consume 17,500 calories, okay? Just remember that. Number 10, this is the most important lesson that I learned over the past year and a half that I hope you guys, if you gather anything from this presentation today, this is the one thing that I hope sticks with you. Number 10, consistency, 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 okay? This is the most powerful lesson that I learned over the past 18 months. You cannot give up. Even if you see a number that you don't like, or if you still don't like how you look in the mirror, giving up is not going to make it any better. Just throwing your hands in the air and just stop trying is not going to magically change the number on the scale and it's not going to make you look any better in the mirror. You need to keep pushing forward, okay? You have to keep pushing forward. You made yourself a non-negotiable agreement when you joined this program that you were going to accomplish your goals. And that's my job here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here whether you like it or not. This is why when I ask if you're gonna join the program, if you're gonna to run to me for help, not run away from me. I need you to stay with us, okay? You cannot give up. You have to keep pushing forward. If something isn't working, let's make a change. Let's make a change, let's test it, and we're gonna try again, okay? This whole journey is pretty much down to a science. We've eliminated the guesswork as much as we possibly can. But we're still gonna, there's still gonna be some guesswork. There's still gonna be some weeks that are gonna be better than others, okay? What's most important though is that you get back up and you keep trying time and time again. You're gonna have terrible weeks. You're gonna have terrible training sessions. You're gonna have days where you, where you binge. You're gonna have days where you overindulge on some food. It doesn't matter in the long run, okay? In a year from now, are you gonna, if you stick with it, are you gonna be more happy that you, gave up or are you to be more happy that you stuck with it even after you binged for a day okay you have to ask yourself that so number 10 consistency 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 you cannot give up okay you got to stick with it so those are my 10 lessons i'll go ahead and run back through them real quick just to recap spark notes number one book smarts versus life smarts my knowledge of science of exercise and nutrition didn't help me when it came to cravings so you have to go through the journey yourself to learn the lessons. Number two, this isn't accidental. You have to dedicate your energy, time, and focus into losing the weight. You can't just do it hap just happenstance. Number three, goal hopping is a great way to stay stuck. If you jump from goal to goal uh, every single month, you're going to be stuck in the same place six months from now. Pick one goal and stick with that. Accomplish that goal before you make another goal. Number four, calories count, but you don't need to count calories. Number five, track daily. Track your weight, track your performance, track your food. That way we have data that we can manipulate to continue to make progress. Number six, calculators suck. Calculators are a great way to find out where we should be to start, but we should not adhere to those calculators for more than a week. Number seven, the body isn't as feeble as you may think. You don't need to carb load for a great training session, and you don't need to eat back your calories after your training session. You burned hundred calories max if you're lucky. Number eight, fast food just doesn't work. The calories may work, you may fit it into your calories, but psychologically you're doing yourself a huge disservice and you're causing cravings and inevitable binges to happen down the road if you continue to consume junk food. Number nine, 
You didn't gain three pounds of fat from the cheat meal. Remember, one pound of fat is 3,500 calories. You didn't eat 17,500 calories in one night. Guarantee it. Number 10, consistency, consistency, consistency. Do not give up. Keep trying every single day. So that is my presentation. So uh, if anybody from the Instagram group uh, is, uh, for my following essentially is on here, you can go ahead and log off. Um, if you're interested in joining the Look Like You Live Blueprint, uh, feel free to send me a message. We can send you an application to see if you're a good fit. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn the time over to um, my members. And my members, go ahead and just um, comment me if you have a question and then uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, we'll tackle your question. I think that's kind of, that's, that's going to be the most organized way that we can do this. Um, Robert, go ahead. Unmute yourself, man. Robert Lee. All right. So like, I don't necessarily need food to have a good training session, but what I've noticed is that when I, when I try to run on an empty stomach, I don't get very far. So what would you mm -hmm. recommend I should eat before I go run or get on the treadmill? It's a great question. And that is actually expected. So this is one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of fasted cardio is we're using, we use cardio to expend more calories. So if you're doing it fasted, you're not going to have any energy. And like what you're experiencing, you're going to burn less calories if you're fasted than if you, to have, if you were to have some fuel in your gut to burn extra calories. So what I recommend Robert for a pre-workout meal, especially if you're going to be doing cardio is something that's going to be light on the stomach. So you want to have very, very low fat sources of protein and very, very low fat sources of carbs pre-workout. Um, for a cardio training session, I would recommend having that meal 60 minutes pre-workout. Um, so a great one that I used to do was, um, I would either do a uh, cream of wheat or white rice with either egg whites or chicken breast. So okay. very, very low fat, great source of carbs, great source of protein to get you through your training session. Uh, Red says he forgot his question. I'm sorry, man. Uh, yeah, if you've got a question, go ahead and just put me in the chat and then you can unmute yourself. Um, that way we can kind of keep this as organized as possible. Uh, McKay, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yeah, just a, so a quick question. I think it was uh, the coaching call last week when we were starting out with the program. I think I remember you um, mentioning uh, for recovery drink, uh, sugar-free Gatorade or Powerade can uh, work to start out, but, but you want to get on the orange juice and cranberry juice and the salt pretty quickly. Is that uh, true? I just wanted some clarification on that. So the sugar-free Gatorade and the sugar-free Powerade are your intra-workout drink. Okay. And the two ounces of orange juice and the two ounces of cranberry juice are your post-workout drink. Sounds good. And both of those are fine, even if you're going to be losing weight. So, uh, Selena, go ahead and mute yourself. Let's hear it. Okay. Um, I don't can't one, I can't do a chin up and don't have space to do it in my home gym. What is the replacement for that? So do you have resistance bands? Yeah. Okay. So you can do two different things. There's two alternatives you can do. The first one is a jumping pull up or sorry, a jumping chin up. So essentially you have the bar, you jump up and hold and you hold it up there as long as you possibly can. You control the negative as long as you possibly can. Okay. Jump up, hold, hold as long as you can, control the negative as long as you possibly can. That's the first one. Uh, that's my favorite, personally. Um, the second one is a resistance band uh, chin up. So you tether your chin up to, you, ch you tether the resistance band to your chin up bar, pull it down over your knee, and then you do your chin ups. I'm not a big fan of those, mainly just because I snapped myself in the nose and that was the scariest, most painful thing I've ever experienced. So I wouldn't wish that on anybody else. So if you can safely do that, you've got my vote, but I recommend the jumping chin ups or the resistance band chin ups. Okay. Um, Red, let's hear you, man. What's up? Okay, this is uh, in regards to the Chanko. Um, after I work out in the Perry window, 
Can I just eat my some chanko or should I just have like an orange or is that now fruits like off the table now because it's in the chanko pot, right? So the only fruits that still work with the chanko diet is your post is your post workout drink. Right. Okay. The, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. That's yeah, the replacement so basically. That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, so you can still have your chanko meal. I would recommend have your drink immediately after your training session and then wait at least 30 minutes before you consume your food. So you don't mess with the digestibility of the nutrients from your drink. So. All right, cool. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Paige, unmute yourself. Let's hear it. Hey, um, so you say uh, we don't track calories burned with weightlifting. Is there ever a point where we start tracking calories with cardio? Like calories burned? There is. And this is why whoop is such a powerful tool. Uh, because whoop tells me your total calorie burned for the day. Um, and so that is already done for you once we start incorporating cardio. Now for everybody who doesn't have a whoop, um, we shoot to burn anywhere from 300 to 500 additional calories in a day, depending on what the caloric deficit we currently have you in. So, uh, yes, we do track calorie. We do track calories exerted from cardio for those who don't have a whoop, for those who do have a whoop, it's already done for you. And in fact, it's better for me because it shows me the total daily caloric expenditure. So. Mm -hmm. um, I have a follow-up question regarding that. So I, I have the whoop. I've had it for, I think maybe five days now. So technically it's calibrated. Um, uh, for instance, today it's said that I've burned almost 1200 calories, mm -hmm. but um, my, my, um, daily caloric intake that you have me on right now is 1500 and I'm mm -hmm. still losing weight. So I, I guess it's not entirely accurate yet. I don't know if it gets more accurate along the way. I found that it may be calibrated in five days, but it doesn't show the most accurate numbers until you give it at least 10 days. Okay. So uh, the fact that you are a lifter and a woman with a lot of muscle mass and you're burning 1200 calories a day does not sound correct. Yeah, <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> so um, any other questions, Paige? I'm going to take your stunned silence as a no. Quentin says, I can't speak, but I'll put my question here. What is the science of fat loss and recovery? Does creatine, does creatine due to holding water help with recovery? Uh, creatine does help with recovery, but mainly because it allows for the more, more recruitment of phosphocreatine molecules into the muscle cell, uh, which, which improves performance. The water retention does help with recovery. So the creatine alone does not really help with the recovery, but it's the retention of water that helps with the recovery. The science of fat loss is going to be a whole different topic when we can do that. Um, like what we did when we talked about the science uh, behind insulin sensitivity and how to increase insulin sensitivity and growth hormone production, we can do a whole nother topic on the science of fat loss is like what happens on a molecular level. Happy to do that. If you would like, um, I'll post that up in the chat and you guys can vote. Um, see if that's something you guys want to talk about. Um, I don't have the time to talk about, all the science behind fat loss in a two minute question session, but we definitely can do that. Uh, James, let's hear your question, man. Hey, I was at the store the other day, and I don't know if you guys have seen or heard of these. It's these Powerade Ultra. It's got some uh, creatine in it. It's probably reversed. I don't know if you can see that. Is it worth spending the extra 20 cents for something like this, or should I just go normal zero sugar Powerade Gatorade? I mean, is, is one better than the other? When how many grams? So I've never heard of those before, but just do me a favor. How many grams of creatine is one, is in one serving? I'll have to find it and get back with you. Okay. So two things that I would want to look into is the grams of creatine per serving and the specific kind of creatine. So that should be under the ingredients. Um, a so uh, if you could just put that in the chat, um, that'd be cool if you could find it. Um, the biggest thing, so 
if you got 20 cents, if you, I mean, if you want to invest the other 20 cents into a drink and just get it all in one, I, that's no problem. You go for it. Um, creatine itself as a supplement is so dirt cheap that even if you're consuming ample amounts of steak, I have no problem with you taking creatine. If you do want to take a creatine supplement, the only one that I recommend is what's called creatine monohydrate. Um, if you're, and you can go to any health store or even online and you can get like 200 servings of creatine monohydrate for like 10 bucks. So if you're spending any more than 10 bucks for 200 servings, you're, you're wasting your money. It just, it's unflavored. You can get it either in a powder or just a pill form. I, I take mine in a pill form. Um, five grams is all you need per day. And that's, that's if you're not consuming enough amounts of steak throughout the day, which if you're doing Shonko or if you're in the golden hybrid, a huge bulk of your, of your meat is going to become, or huge bulk of your protein is going to be coming from steak anyway. So that's one of those things. It doesn't hurt to take it, but you're probably not going to be probably going to be fine without it too. So it's a super roundabout nuanced way of answering that question. But, um, okay. Any other questions? Just put me in the chat. Our numbers are dwindling. They're shrinking. So people are logging off. Chris White, go ahead and unmute yourself, man. What's up? Yeah. So uh, when it comes to steak consumption, do you have a preference between grass-fed and grain-fed, or is it all good? It's all good. It's all good. From a taste standpoint, there is a difference. Um, so when I'm doing my chonko meals, I always use grass-fed ground beef just because I like the taste. It just tastes better. But from a macronutrient perspective, the grass fed will be just a little more fatty, like per serving. It's like one or two grams extra of fat. Um, but other than that, that's, there's never been any kind of evidence or any kind of data showing that grass fed is healthier than regular, just store bought. So. Cool. Any other questions? All right, cool. Well, our form check coaching call is going to be Thursday, 6 p.m. So if you've submitted lifts and you want me to evaluate them live on here, make sure that you attend that coaching call, 6 p.m. If you're on the call or not, um, I'll just I'll evaluate them anyway. Um, what I found to be kind of good is everybody who's on the call, I'll evaluate you first so you can get off the call. And then anybody who want, who submitted a form check that hasn't been evaluated yet, I'll just evaluate live on the call. And then I'll just, I'll put your timestamp of when I've evaluated you in the comments on the Facebook. Now that we can do zoom calls broadcasted to the Facebook group. That's sweet. So, okay guys, have a great night. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Thursday.